Today we're going to review the anatomy of the skin and then we're going to take a look at the three ways that we can improve the skin and coat of dogs and cats with food or nutrition, supplements, and grooming. So when we're taking a really basic look at the skin, which is our largest organ of our body, its purpose is to be a barrier to prevent things from going in and things from going out that we don't want. So we're going to discuss three layers of the skin. We're going to discuss the dermis, which is the superhighway of the skin. It's what brings in nutrients to nourish it. It takes things away. The immune system function comes from here. Uh, this is where all the glands reside, the nerves reside, um, and everything is functioning. Then we get to a layer called the epidermis. The epidermis is a layer that I like to refer to as looking like bricks and mortar. So the bricks are the dead cells or the skin cells that we see on the surface of our skin. Uh, and the mortar in between is made up of lipids or fats. They're what protect us from losing moisture and help keep your skin pliable and resilient so that it doesn't tear, rip, or become real fragile. And on top of that, we're going to talk about something called the acid mantle, which in humans, this is a lot of times what we try to wash off every day with the use of shampoos and soaps. And in a dog and cat, this is actually a very protective layer that we want to keep healthy because this protects them from the overgrowth of bacteria, funguses, and our pesky little friend, the flea. So in looking at what makes up the different layers, we have the dermis. The important aspects that we're going to look at with the dermis are the fact that this is where inflammation comes from. So when you see the red, itchy, irritated skin, it's in this area that that is happening, and that is because of the immune system that is present there. And if you remember about essential fatty acids, omega-3s are what control inflammation. So when we are adding essential fatty acids, and particularly omega-3 fatty acids, it's this dermal area where they're going to have their effect. They're going to reduce inflammation. This is also where supporting the immune system with supplements, this is going to work in because this is where your immune system resides for your skin. The next layer we're going to look at is called the epidermis. The epidermis is the brick and mortar layer. The bricks are made out of a specialized protein called keratin. So this is where a diet that is a highly available protein so for our dogs and cats, which are carnivorous, this would be animal proteins. The animal protein is broken down and then used to build this protein called keratin. So this is why when they're on a really poor quality diet, a lot of times the first place that you're going to see a problem is in the skin and coat. And they don't have different nutrients that they need to make the different pieces. And one of the most important pieces would be the protein keratin. So the bricks are made out of keratin, and then there's mortar. The mortar is what holds those skin cells in place. The mortar is made of lipids or fats. These are another area where our essential fatty acids work. And these are primarily where the omega-6 fatty acids come in. They are what helps keep moisture into the skin and helps keep these skin cells attached to your body to help build up this barrier between the outside world and your dermis. You want to have a nice thick barrier. The thicker that barrier and more healthy that barrier is, the harder it is for things to penetrate or get inside. The epidermis is also the layer where different micronutrients or trace minerals uh, become helpful. So we'll look at two of them. We'll look at zinc. Zinc stabilizes the outside of the bricks, so it stabilizes these brick cells. And then another major trace mineral is selenium. Selenium is important to protect from free radical damage. 
So for all of those out there that sunbathe, which I know is rare in Washington, but if you are sunbathing, radiation from the sun or the sunlight will come in and cause free radical oxidation. And antioxidants are what stops that. So selenium is needed in the skin layers to help prevent free radical damage. So the last layer of the healthy skin and coat we want to look at is this outer layer called the acid mantle. The acid mantle is a very, very important layer in cats and dogs. It is made of a oily secretion called sebum which comes from the sebaceous gland. So the sebaceous gland surrounds hair follicles and releases sebum out in the top layer of the skin. This is made up of a lot of fatty acids or lipids. So this is where your omega-6 fatty acids will help improve skin and coat is on this layer. The acid mantle also contains the secretions of an apocrine gland, which in humans would be our sweat glands. But as we remember, dogs and cats don't have sweat glands except for on their feet. So these apocrine glands actually secrete pheromones or hormones. So we don't really completely understand the role of the apocrine gland, but we do know that it does release some pheromones, so that's part of the communication of the animals, and then it also has some antimicrobial or antibacterial properties, and so this is secreted on the surface of the skin. It mixes together with the sebum and then with dirt to make the acid mantle. This acid mantle is what protects the animals from biting insects, which would be our pesky little fleas, and it also creates a healthy environment to prevent overgrowth of bad bacteria and yeast. So th the things that will help make an acid mantle stronger will be our omega-6 fatty acids and grooming. So when you brush an animal, you move this hair follicle or stimulate this hair follicle, you're stimulating more oil production. And this helps produce more oils and to get them spread out over the layer of the skin and helps build up this acid mantle. This is also where we want to be careful about bathing. Unless prescribed by a veterinarian, you do not want to bathe dog or cat more than once a week and ideally as infrequently as needed to keep owner and pet happy. And this acid mantle layer is the reason that we want to use dog and cat shampoos. This is because these products are formulated to be gentle on this acid mantle layer and not strip it away. When you use a human product, they are much harsher and they strip the acid mantle they strip oils and, and remove all this. And that leads to drying of the skin and flaking. So we always want to make sure that people are using products that are made for dogs and cats so that they're gentle with the acid mantle layer. So in review, the dermis or the bottom layer is where omega-3s work and help improve skin and coat and where supporting a healthy immune system is going to help skin and coat. The next layer called the epidermis is where the proteins from our diet are going to help make the bricks stronger. This is where trace minerals like zinc and selenium are going to help make these bricks stronger. This is also where we have the mortar layer which is the fatty layer and this is where omega-6 are going to help make the skin and coat stronger. And then we have the final layer, the acid mantle layer, which is made up of sebum, which is an oil. So this is where our omega-6 fatty acids, our lipids or fats, are going to help. This is where brushing or grooming is going to help spread the oil layer and keep it forming. And then this is also where 
shampoos and topical applied ointments are going to take effect and so we want to be careful that we're not stripping away the acid mantle on a frequent basis so this is why bathing unless directed by a veterinarian is kept down to less than once a week